Hello YouTubers, today we're going to be just doing a quick video on how to change a radiator in a car. Very simple, just a couple of little things you need to know, it just makes it a little bit easier for yourself. Um, like everything, the car I'm doing it on now is a Toyota Avensis um, and there's quite a lot of room so it makes things a lot easier. There's only two pipes, there's a pipe here and a pipe at the bottom there. Some cars are just more tricky, but they're all the same thing. It's just a bit harder to get to. But the first thing you want to do when you get your new radiator, before you, before you strip out your old one, is just double make sure it's right. That all the clips are in the right place, that the holes for the pipes are in the right place. Because what happens sometimes is, there is a couple of different types for the cars and they can look the same. And once you get everything stripped out, if you try and put this in and you do any damage to it, they won't take it back. So just before you do anything, just double make sure it's the same. Now I've made sure on this one it's, and it's right, so we're gonna, we're gonna bang it in. First thing you want to do though is make sure the engine is cold because two reasons, you don't wanna get boiling hot water on you and if it's really hot, when you take this off, it could splash in your face, which again, you don't want. So just make sure it's cold, it's just, it's, it's a lot easier. It makes everything a lot easier. Now this particular radiator, it's very simple. There's a 13 mil bolt here, which takes off this clip. Same on the other side. Now if you're also stuck and you want to know how it fits in, it's always good to look at the old, or should I say the new one. And you can see on the bottom, that these here, there's normally little rubber grommets which you have to reuse. And that sits in the car and then it's bolted from the top. So it just slots out, I'll show you. Then all you need to look for is we know there's a pipe here, there's a return pipe here, and there's a pipe on the bottom. It's right down there, I'll show you that a bit better. Now again, you go to the new one, and you can see where the pipes are. And on this new one, there's actually these little um, wing nuts here. You can actually take them off and drain the, the water out of the radiator. Um, but I'm just going to disconnect the pipes, it's the same thing. And obviously you've got the fan here, which is bolted on before bolts, and there's one clip. But just unclip it, leave the, the fan on, take the whole thing out as one unit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo this bolt, undo this bolt, take off this pipe, take off the bottom pipe, and disconnect the, the fan. And I'll show you once I've got it off, I'll, uh, I'll show you it. Now a handy little tool, they're not expensive and they're good to get even if you're just doing it part time, is this little spring compressor. Now it's actually, it's like a little, it actually locks itself, as you can see there, there's like a little ratchet there. And basically what it does is, you clip it on the pipe, you, try and do this one hand, it's quite difficult, you clip it on the pipe, you can press it together, it locks itself, so that's now locked by this little arm here and it means you can take off that as you can see quite easy then all you do is you hold together release this little clip and it opens itself out you don't need this you don't actually need that you can just use pliers as well it's, it's not a big deal but it's just this little gadget it's very cheap it's very cheap and it's very handy because there's these sort of clips all over cars now and they just make life a lot easier now as you can see these are little clamps that just went over, a little bit of rubber inside there, very easy to remove. They're 11 mil, sorry 12 mil bolt, it's a jack car. Now I wasn't really looking properly but this wire here was for the lander sensor. Um, you don't have to disconnect it, you just got to pull it away from the actual, because it was just sat in, in the housing there, so just pull it out of the way. This was the wire for the fan, this side. Now what you also might find on some cars is another um, plug for the actual thermostat uh, sensor switch. Sometimes it's on the engine over here, sometimes it's on the radiator. It doesn't really matter, but it's just an extra switch. So what I'm gonna do now is take off this pipe, take off the bottom pipe, and I'm gonna take the whole thing out. Take off this as well, but that you can just literally do this by hand. Just pull that back. Now I don't actually, the, the best thing about this is I didn't need to even put it on the lift. So you can do this without even jacking the car up on this particular model. 
and on this one anyway it's leaking all the way down here the seal's gone but you'll know if your radiator is leaking obviously now once it's out this is also another good time just to double check that everything's the same now on this particular one this has an extra plug where the one over there doesn't it still has this plug but don't worry about that don't worry about if the one you've got has a drain plug and the one you you the one you've got in the car doesn't that's not a, that's not important all that's important is everything's in the same place so like the the, um, the hoses and the bolts for the fan that's all that's really important and this one is and obviously it's the same size the little rubber mounts have stayed in the car so that's not a problem and yeah that's it so what I'm gonna do now is take off the four bolts for the fan 10 or 11 mil and swap the fan over now sorry about the camera work today I hope it's all coming through okay this is obviously I'm on my own so it makes a bit of a nightmare another good thing to do with this fan before you put it back on you just test it, just spin it by hand, make sure it doesn't sound rough or anything like that. Give it a wiggle, make sure there's no play in it. This one's good. And it literally... <laughs> you get it the right way. And as you can see, one, two, three, four bolts. This is then ready to bolt back in. Right, because of the way this is and the way the bottom pipe is quite long, as you can see, I put the bottom pipe in before I've actually put the radiator in. Now, as you can see, it's in. I've located the studs at the bottom. I've put the bracket on here, the bracket on there, and I've put the top pipe on. Now, I disconnected the lander sensor. It's important that you connect that back before you start it, because otherwise you'll throw on an engine light. You need diagnostic then to throw it off, and it's all, you know, messy. That is the plug then for the actual fan to turn on and off the, and then, um, this then is the expansion bottle, the return. Just slide that back on. Locate in there. Squeeze that together. Again, it's harder by hand, but I do it with two hands to put that back. And then we're literally ready to pour water and antifreeze in and start it up. Now the, the, the other important thing is to make sure you get the right antifreeze. Uh, there's two different colors, green and pink. You can get a universal one. Uh, this one takes green take about four liters of antifreeze and the rest with water but again you need to check out on your particular car some takes more some takes less some takes different types so just double check on that and then that's it now as you can see I've started to pour water in you can see all the bubbles bubbling up so you have to wait for that to start bubbling obviously it could take 10 minutes could take 20 minutes basically turn the heat on full blast inside turn it on to hot and you're waiting for your fan to kick in. Once your fan kicks in, you know there's no more air in the system. Now, if your radiator has a radiator cap and an expansion bottle, you pour the water in, in the radiator cap, not in the expansion bottle. If your car just has an expansion bottle, that's where you pour your water. That's quite important. So I'm just literally gonna wait now until this stops bubbling, keep pouring it until it's full, and then I'll show you then when it's all good. Another thing to look out for is you want to keep obviously checking this pouring water in a little by little. This pipe is hot and this pipe is now hot, really hot. But on some cars, along these pipes, there could be a bleed nipple, like a bolt that's there and you have to screw up. Some cars bleed by these pipes, they don't bleed by leaving the radiator cap off. This one bleeds by leaving the radiator cap off, but some cars don't be aware of that. And the way you know when you're fully on air locked, just keep going to the car, making sure it's not overheating, which it isn't, and check the air vents. Now this air vent is still cold and the engine's warm, so we know there's still air in the system. Once the air vent gets hot and the fan kicks in, you know you're absolutely fine, but just keep double checking to make sure nothing's happening overheating, because you could have a problem also with your thermostat. Especially on a newer car, if your radiator is hot, there could be a problem with your thermostat. This radiator did go because it was old, as you can see, really old, and all the seals went. It's just something else to keep an eye on. As you can see, when you look down there, you can see all the little bubbles. As you can see it. All the little bubbles, and that means there's still a hell of a lot of air in it. So we just need to keep waiting until all the air is out. It's just a waiting game now, unfortunately. More bubbles! Oh, oh.
I'm rather blowing my balls. Now, what I've done on this one, the bubbles have stopped coming out and there's hot air inside the car. So I've put the cap back on, because this is a pressurized system, this one. Um, if you take the cap off when it's hot, it'll just squirt the water no matter what on these particular cars. So now what I'm waiting for, now the system is pressurizing, I'm waiting for the fan to kick in. Once the fan kicks in and spins around, I know everything's fine and you know everything's working. Then I'm gonna let it cool down for an hour or so, take the cap off. If I need to put any more water in, put any more water in, put the cap back on and we should all be good. Well, that's the plan, hopefully. Right, that's it, it's done. It's in, it's not leaking, none of the pipes are leaking. It's always best to check it. Take it for a run up and down the road and obviously with the cap on, make sure that when it's under pressure properly, nothing's leaking, there's no pinholes anywhere, so that's all fine. Like I said, on this particular one, fill the radiator not the expansion bottle and it bleeds from the radiator some of them cars come to mind bmws and some of the renaults have a bleed nipple on the side that you have to literally undo let the air come out um, you leave the radiator cap on or the expansion bottle on and then that's how you bleed them so certain cars have slightly different ways of bleeding them, but it's, it's basically the same so just basically another good thing to do is also is leave it overnight and check the water first thing in the morning when it's cold because you might just have to top it up a little bit uh, once everything circulates and stuff. So that's it, as simple as that really. Uh, hope, hopefully um, you've got something from this video and don't forget thumbs up and subscribe and get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.